power. When you hear the word power, what's your visceral response? For a lot of years, when I heard the word power, something in me would kind of cringe and kind of pull back. I think that's cultural because our culture has this idea out there that power corrupts. And honestly, as a Christian person, I kind of had been implicitly, if not explicitly taught, to, in a sense, sort of deny power, to, to eschew it, to step away from it, um, because it was maybe dangerous. But then I started to really look at the scriptures and what they have to say about power. And I started in Genesis, and I looked and saw that as God is creating the earth, Genesis 1, he empowers things and people and just sets them free to do and be what they are. So he says, sun, govern the day, moon, govern the night, stars, serve as signs, seas, team with fish and living things, lands, team with plants, and, and with people, same thing, people, animals, be fruitful, multiply. And, and so I saw that pattern, and I, I, I read other scriptures that said things like, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power, the five-letter bad word, power, and a sound mind. And I was like, gosh. And then I looked at Jesus, who honestly is, um, to me, the most important person to look at. So I look at Jesus, who the scriptures tell us is the best representation of God. And I watched how Jesus lived and how he used power. And what he does over and over again is he sets free and he empowers people, again, to be part of their communities, to, to just be who they are. So when he heals people, you'll often notice, number one, there'll be a restoration to community so they can be a part of this larger thing God has going on. And he'll also say, go and whatever, um, go and sin no more, um, pick up your mat and go home. Uh, go show yourselves to the priests over and over. It, it's not like he says, okay, now come here. I healed you. Now you're under my, you know, it, that's not at all what Jesus is like. Instead, he, he heals, he makes whole, and he says, go. And, he, and he, he has this kind of, just like God does, this desire and this delight, I think, to set people free and just watch what happens and to be with us in that going. So God is not a God who's worried about gathering power to himself. Not an issue, God does not need to do that. What God does instead, he loves to share and empower his creation. So a story about this. A few years ago, my family was having a graduation celebration party and our pastor was involved uh, and was invited to this party. And so we asked him as is often customary, pastor, uh, how about saying grace for us before we eat this beautiful food? And instead of saying grace, the way I had seen it done hundreds of times, pastor looked around and he saw a 12-year-old person in the, a 12-year-old young woman who was in the um, group. And he said, hey, so-and-so, I wonder how you'd feel about praying. And that 12-year-old said, I would love to. And she prayed a beautiful blessing that was very meaningful. And I thought, wow, I had never seen a pastor pass up on prayer. Why did he do that? He had power, he had a role of authority in that setting, and instead of him using it, even though of course it would have been great to pray, what he did was he used that power to empower someone else, unexpected, to recognize, oh, they had power to bless. They had power that was worth the community being involved with. And so here's my question for you. I wonder if you might ponder what power do I have? What influence do I have? What am I good at making? What am I good at encouraging in others? What kind of power do I have? Because if we're not aware of our power, that actually is a dangerous thing. So we wanna actually be aware of the power that God has given us and use it to serve other people and to be like God, to imitate God in empowering others and delighting to watch and see what happens.